This is GTV. Making the connection. The following is a story about a family of TV game machines that was a full force effort, highly successful, and the concept behind it still lives on in hardware today. Yet somehow, this story has literally never been covered. Until now. This is the Taito Online Trio story. This video would not be possible without the help of Jap JAC. All of the information and world exclusive never before seen online game screenshots for this video were provided by him. Jap JAC is the original IG Japanese arcade action gaming YouTuber in Japan. He has been making videos since March 2006. I highly recommend his channel, and he's a good friend. Why was it that Nintendo, Sega, and Sony were the only companies in Japan to ever have long-term success in the home gaming market? Well, as it turns out, that's just how things look to us in the modern day. There were successful attempts by others. It's just that since they don't appear to look like a standard TV game machine, they often get ignored. Taito was one of many in the late 80s and early 90s who dove in head first trying to deliver what was then known as a next-generation experience, releasing three machines in Japan that were full of revolutionary features that are standard these days, and with popular, engaging games to support them. The story of the Taito Online Trio begins in 1992, when Taito revealed a machine known as the Wow Wow. This home game machine showed off many promising features, a CD-ROM drive for the games, as well as what was back then a very novel feature downloadable games. However, unlike previous downloadable services, it would not require an expensive modem or tying up your home phone line. The Taito Wow Wow abandoned all of that and offered its games via satellite transmission. The name of this machine, Wow Wow, shares the same name as the television network that would host these games. There were plans for many games to be available upon debut. Darius, Space Invaders, Bubble Bobble, Kiki Kai Kai, Rainbow Islands, Rostan Saga, and Parasol Stars were all planned, and would have likely got many people on board. But unfortunately, this machine never saw a release, despite the Taito Wow Wow making it all the way to a finished prototype at Tokyo Game Show. In the end, the machine was deemed too costly to produce, and the downloads too slow to deliver the experience Taito was hoping for. After Tokyo Game Show 92, the Taito Wow Wow was never seen or heard from again. This part of the story is actually pretty well known. The photos of the Wow Wow being shown off at the Tokyo Game Show were printed in magazines and made their way to the Western world, where then these old issues were later scanned and shared online, leading to dozens of articles and videos on the Wow Wow, often with annoying titles like Taito's Amazing Failure or The Secret Forgotten History of Taito. Well, if something was never released and only has three photos of it actually existing, how did it fail? Because it never went on sale? We will never know if the Wow Wow could have succeeded, but the technology and concept of broadcasting games lived on, as Wow Wow, the media company, had a subsidiary named Sento Giga, a large stake of which was bought by Nintendo. The partnership led to the Satellaview, a broadcast service where, through an add-on, Super Famicom owners could download games via satellite transmission, just as Taito had always envisioned. All of this is actually well documented, so it seems unusual to call it a secret or forgotten, but I guess that's just how the internet likes to explain things. Beyond that, there was a second life to the Taito Wow Wow, and that is actually a secret that has been off the radar for some time. In 1992, a second piece of hardware made by Taito saw full, proper release the Tsushin Karaoke X2000. This machine was a leap forward compared to previous karaoke machines. The X2000 had a modem installed to download songs directly to the unit rather than having to buy special video discs like other karaoke machines of the day. Individual songs could be chosen, and many karaoke versions of hit songs were released on the same day as the original. The X2000 was a highly successful machine, being supported for 25 years. Not long after the release of the X2000 and the cancellation of the Wow Wow, Taito got to work on combining the two products into one. Partnering this time with Kyocera, Taito spent the next few years developing a machine that would deliver games, karaoke, 
and news services done over the internet. The first of these machines would be released in October 1995, the Taito XGOGO, with a price of 64,800 yen, a little over 700 US dollars at the time. The XGOGO featured a 9600 baud modem and supported a microphone, remote control, and was even compatible with infrared-enabled game controllers allowing for simultaneous two-player gaming. The XGOGO had the ability to queue up multiple songs and download games through Taito's X Datanet service, which was available through a flat monthly charge of 1,500 yen, almost $20 US in 1995. Song downloads were 30 yen for each use or 90 yen to store and replay indefinitely, while games cost 50 yen per play, half the price of a game center. As well, there was a communication charge which took the place of the standard fee for phone line use and cost less. The ad campaign for the XGOGO in 1995 featured some major star power. Taito recruited pop star Namie Amuro as the image girl for the XGOGO. Her debut single, Audi Feels Exit, was featured in a series of TV CMs. Veteran announcer Jun Hattori also lent his voice to the campaign. The machine showed a lot of promise and was something like your modern-day all-in-one set-top box. However, the price of entry was quite high and the data speed was slow. Music downloads took between 45 and 90 seconds, games about 3 minutes. And so, the XGOGO was discontinued and replaced with a newer, revised version, the Taito Media Box M88. This machine would support the same Taito X Datanet service for karaoke, games, and information, but came with a 14.4K modem and a lower price of 39,800 yen, or about $430 US. Download times were faster, but still not instant. Taito would continue support for several years into the future, and the success of the MediaBox M88 would lead Taito to acquire Kyocera by the year 2000. The Taito X Datanet supported hardware would receive a final upgrade in the form of the Taito Media Box X01, released on December 4, 2002. This machine came equipped with a DVD drive and 56K modem. The machine sold at an open price, meaning that whatever each individual store felt it was worth is what it would sell for. The service fees, however, were still the same as they were in 1995. The Taito Media Box X01 also allowed for up to 12 minutes of recording your own voice for later playback. Also, the M88 and X01 had deluxe models which had cassette decks built in. While these machines were intended for home use, many saw their way into love hotels and karaoke boxes as well. In 2006, Taito divested itself of all karaoke-related businesses, which were acquired by Xing. But Taito did not abandon the media box. The X Datanet service of karaoke and games received continued support from Taito until September 30th, 2012. After that date, the machines lost all game functionality. Now, for the first time, GTV and TFP Fanitsu are proud to present a list of all known arcade action games for the Taito X Datanet station service. Some previously never seen before and completely unknown on the internet. Among these undocumented games, unique installments of Space Invaders, Bubble Bobble, and Tetris were once playable. As all the games were online, many had networking capabilities for nationwide high scoreboards and head-to-head -head play. And it wasn't just arcade-style games. Taito X Datanet had a Pokemon-type game, Net Battlers, where players could raise various types of monsters and fight head-to-head -head online. What other titles were available? No one knows exactly. Hopefully this video will finally spark interest in others, allowing more to be discovered. Sadly, there's no way to access the games now, and unless someone recorded gameplay footage from all those years ago, we will likely never see these games in action. To bring things full circle, the concept of the Taito Online Trio still lives on, as Xing, with its Joy Sound product line, continues Taito's tradition of Tsushin Karaoke into the modern day. 
Joy-Con Karaoke Packs have been sold in Japan for the Sony PlayStation 3 and 4, as well as the Nintendo Wii, Wii U, and Switch, where they were well received. Yet, the long history of Taito's home game ventures seems to have been lost to time. Sure, the games are no longer available, but the machines are plentiful in the wild, despite having nearly no use these days. It's unusual. As it seems, those who write gaming history do so with the narrow viewpoint that a machine that only plays games and does nothing else is counted as part of the lineage of gaming, while multi-use machines such as the Taito Online Trio do not. I have shared with you a family of machines that were supported for years and played a major part in the evolution into the current box you have under your TV right now. Not just the karaoke and multimedia functions, but downloadable games, games you can pay for with each play session, head-to-head -head matchups online, upgraded hardware supported by a uniform service, and overall media convergence. These Taito machines should be included and recognized properly. I hope with the information I have presented here, you can consider it. And the next time you see a new feature or peripheral for your favorite hardware, you'll know that it probably existed somewhere else first and wasn't dreamed up yesterday.